Number 29. Water rises in a glass capillary tube to a height of 17 centimeters. What is the diameter of the capillary tube? Okay. So we're talking about capillary action here, specifically because they're talking that, you know, we're talk they're talking to us that uh, there's a glass capillary tube. Anytime that we're talking about capillary tubes and we have uh, numbers, we got a height, they want a diameter, there's only one formula that we could possibly use, and that's this formula right here. So it's h equals 2 times t times cosine of a degree divided by r times rho times uh, g. So let's just go over these variables. Now h stands for the height. How high did the substance rise in the glass capillary tube? Well, they did tell us that the height was 17 centimeters. So I guess we'll leave it as that for now. Now, 2 is a constant number here. It's 2 times capital T. Now, for the most of, of chemistry, capital T is always temperature, but not in this case. This uh, formula is more physics-based, not really chemistry-based, so that's why you're going to start seeing variables and units that are standard for physics. Capital T is surface tension. And this is standard for what substance you're using. In this case, we're dealing with water. So I looked up what the surface tension for water was. 0 0.07199 kilograms per uh, second squared. And those are the standard units that you have to use for this formula here. Okay. Now comes cosine of an angle. Now, this comes from the material of the glass, of the capillary tube. In this case, it's glass. Now, when you put the glass into uh, the water, right, the substance, there is no, uh, it, it basically just goes straight down. So it doesn't make an angle. So in this case, if you're talking about a glass capillary tube, the angle is zero degrees. So that was the key here. So zero degrees for glass. Now R stands for radius. And in this case, they're asking for what is the diameter? So from a diameter, you could always get a radius, right? From a radius, you could always get a diameter. But they didn't tell us what the radius was. So in this case, this is what I'm searching for. I have to find the radius first. Now hopefully we could find out what this and this is. Now, since we're physics-based, we're using a variable that is used in physics. Uh, this means density. So we might see it like lowercase d in chemistry, but some textbooks will use that symbol there, the rho. And just know that this, with its physics correct units and with putting it into this formula, it's 1,000 kilograms per meters uh, cubed. So this would be 1,000. In chemistry, we usually use grams per mil, but in physics, we use kilograms per meters cubed. G is the acceleration due to gravity. It's a constant value. So this one is 9.8 or 9.81 grams per grams, <laughs> meters per second squared. Okay. So we have all of our variables except for what we're trying to solve for, which is the radius in this case. But... Remember, the units have to match. So kilogram, got to go with kilogram. That's the unit for mass. Time has to be in seconds. So all the seconds have to be in seconds. Now here is a meter. Here is a meter. But this one is a, oh, it's a centimeter. So the first thing I have to do is I have to convert this centimeter into meter. And remember, converting centimeter to meter, all you got to do is just divide by 100. Or you could take the decimal, move it two spots over to the left. So this would be 0 0.17 meters. Now we're ready to go. So I have 0 0.7, 0 0.17 equals 2 times the surface tension cosine of an angle divided by R, the density 
times acceleration due to gravity. So let's see. So we have two times. So the surface tension is going to be 0 0.07199. The cosine is going to be 0. The R value is what we're searching for, so that's x. The density is the 1,000. And then the acceleration due to gravity is the 9.81. OK. So where do we go from here? Well, this one looks like just a big cross multiplication. I could take the 0.17 and multiply it by the whole denominator on the bottom. And then I could just simplify the top by just multiplying the 2 times the 0 0.07199 times the cosine of 0. So let's go for it. 0 0.17 times 1,000 times 9.81. And I get 1667.7, and that has the x in it. And now this is going to equal, let's just simplify the numerator. So 2 times 0 0.07199 times the cosine of 0. You could close the parentheses. And just checking sure, just making sure that all the numbers are right. That looks good. 0 0.14398. Now, it just seems like we could just solve for x, divide on both sides by the 1,667.7, 1667.7. This goes bye-bye. And now we have x equals, and I love the TI-84 because I could just go up there, grab my numbers, less chance of error, and press enter. Okay, and seems like two sig figs, so maybe I'll say 8.6 times 10 to the negative fifth. And now just know that that was in meters. Now keep in mind that this is the radius. We still want the diameter. Now remember that if I have a, or if I want to solve for a diameter, it's always two times the radius. So I could just take that value that I just got, 8.6 times 10 to the negative fifth, and times it by 2. Because then I can find out my diameter. So 8.6, second comma, the EE button, my favorite button, times 10 to the negative fifth, times 2. And I get 1.72 times 10 to the negative fourth. That's still in meters, and this is the diameter. Now, if we just want to convert units... Let's just say probably would be appropriate to put this in millimeters. All we would have to do is just take that and times it by a thousand. Now they didn't specifically say what they wanted the units in for a diameter, but since it's pretty small, we can bump that up to get it to be um, millimeters. I just know that if you still want to keep with the two sig figs, you would just drop that 1.72 to just 1.7. For me, it doesn't really matter, sig figs, eh, but, you know, maybe your teacher professor cares. So I'm just going to take the 1.7 and second comma, negative 4, times 1,000, and 0 0.17, and now that's in millimeters, that looks like a much better number to work with, and that is your diameter. And there you go. Let's box this answer off and call it a video. Okay, let's just do a little coloring. The best part of the video always. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Anyway, so I hope this video helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Let's keep studying hard, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.